The wait is over. A new season of ABB Formula E has launched. The reigning champs, Diaz Tachita, won the jackpot last season and hold both the titles. But two new contenders, Porsche and Mercedes-Benz, have entered the game and are here to take control. But the champs aren't the only ones to beat. Twelve teams packed with manufacturers go head-to-head -head on city streets around the world. With innovative racing features like Fan Boost and the revolutionary Attack Mode, both giving the cars a power boost and creating incredible, unpredictable racing that you can only get in ABB Formula E. The time for playing games is over and some of the most fierce competition in motorsport awaits. Season six of ABB Formula E is going to be the most electrifying yet. Before we get to the action, let's meet this week's host. Reigning Formula Two champion Nick De Vries made the move into Formula E over the summer, joining up with the new Mercedes-Benz EQ team. Diria was his first race weekend. Hey guys, I'm Nick DeVries and I'm your host for this episode of Street Racers. On this episode of Street Racers, we'll be following our host, rookie driver Nick DeVries, as he tackles round two of the double header opening weekend of the championship in Diria, Saudi Arabia. We'll be speaking to Sam Bird, the first driver in Formula E history to win a race in every season of the championship five-year anniversary of his first ever win. We'll bring you up to speed on the drama-filled qualifying session for the second race of the Diria doubleheader. And of course, bring you all the action from the instant classic ABB Formula E race from round two in Diria. But before we go any further, let's remind ourselves of what went down one day earlier in the first race of the doubleheader visit to Saudi Arabia. Mercedes-Benz EQ had an excellent start to their first ever race in ABB Formula E, with Stoffel Van Dorn qualifying second and Nick De Vries third. But BMW i Andretti's Alexander Sims managed to snatch the first pole position. We go green in Diria, and it's a good start from Van Dorn, but Sims comes over, covers the inside line. Envision Virgin Racing Sam Bird was flying through the field, having started fifth, but unfortunately at the expense of our host, Nick De Vries. Bird is in attack mode, Mortara is not. The British driver looks to the inside and moves up into fourth position then. Here's Bird, round the outside of Nick De Vries. Bird goes through into third position. And it wasn't long before the pressure from Bird and Van Dorn was too much for Sims. And is Van Dorn going to use his fan boost here? Van Dorn covers the inside. Bird gets the inside though. Van Dorn's laid on the brakes and he's going up the inside of Sims. They make contact and Bird, Bird is lead. through. No. no, not quite. But Van Dorn is in the lead now. Defending two-time champion Jean-Eric Verne and his DS Tachita retired from the race with a steering column issue. Porsche's Andre Lauderer made the move when Sims went off the racing line to activate attack mode. Sims activates his second attack mode and drops behind Andre Lotterer. Same energy that Bird and Van Dorn, same energy. Bird was hounding Van Dorn as the Mercedes-Benz team wrestled with a strategic decision. A reminder, Van Dorn still has to use his attack mode. No attack mode, we abort. Abort attack mode is the message to Van Dorn. He's but going, Bird's going he's for going. it anyway. Up the inside into the chicane. Bird's into the lead of the race in Diria. Whoa! Thought Lotterer was going for it into the left-hander there. Attack mode again proved to be a deciding factor as Stoffel Van Dorn lost second place to Andre Lotterer during his second mandatory activation. After a late safety car following Daniel Abt's crash in his Audi, Bird held on to take the checkered flag, with Andre Lauderer incredibly claiming second in Porsche's first Formula E race. So it's Bird to win the first race of season six. Yes, Bird! Go, Bird! Bird took the top step of the podium to claim his ninth win in ABB Formula E and continue his record of at least one race win in every season.
our host, rookie driver Nick DeVries, and his teammate Stoffel Van Dorn had a successful first outing for the Mercedes-Benz EQ team. With good pace through qualifying, Super Bowl, and the race bringing them to a solid finish with Van Dorn in third and DeVries in sixth. We caught up with the guys after free practice for round two of the doubleheader. Hey guys, good morning from Riyadh. We're here in the pit lane uh, after FB3. We are here with my teammate. Uh, how was your morning? Uh, yeah, the morning was okay, but uh, I think, yeah, first of all, looking back at the race yesterday, it uh, was a good result for all of us, um, you know, to finish third and win it with you finishing sixth as well. It was, uh, I think, the best start for, uh, for Mercedes. Um, so, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope we can keep this up during, during the whole season as well. Mercedes on the podium in their first race in ABB FIA Formula E. So obviously it was your first race in Formula E as well, and, and the first race with Mercedes was a uh, yeah. How how was your journey, and uh, what did you take away from the race yesterday? Uh, well, as you already rightfully said, I think we had a very good result as a team. Uh, we were a little bit um, you know in an advantage being in qualifying group three and four, uh, but we managed to optimize that uh, advantage. So today will be a lot tougher. Towards the final corner, the 24-year-old Dutch racer across the line. Oh, it's third. Mercedes second and third as it stands. I think we did a good job in um, optimizing our, our chance and um, yeah, finishing with you on the podium and, and P6 for myself. But it was a very eventful race. There is a lot uh, of managing going on through, throughout the race. Uh, everything is very new and, and, and challenging, but uh, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, however, today is going to be uh, yeah. a lot tougher. Yeah, for me, never, uh, yeah, always surprises, and uh, every race is always, uh, when you think everything is settled, it always changes towards the end, so it's yeah. Uh, yeah, something to look forward to, but today will be different in Group 1 qualifying, hopefully we can, we can be up there as well. Van Dorn's late on the brakes, and he's going up the inside of Sims, they make contact, and Bert Bert is through! No. no, not quite, but Van Dorn is in the lead now! Having both finished in the top six in race one, they will have to qualify for round two with the additional handicap of running in the difficult first group. So how do you think uh, group one will affect us today? Well, it's, it's really the first experience for, uh, for us, even as a team and for myself. Um, I don't really know what to expect. I think the track conditions will be a little bit harder to, to read being in the, in the first group. Um, today hopefully it's a little bit better with the track Im improved already so uh, hopefully we can still still kind of be in the top 10 that would be I think that would be a fantastic uh, fantastic achievement so we'll see how we go we'll be seeing how the guys get on later in the show but first let's take a trip down memory lane as the ticker tape settled in Diria after round one British driver Sam Bird wasn't only celebrating winning the first race of the season, but incredibly, it was exactly five years to the day since the Brit took his first Formula E win in race two of the inaugural Formula E season. We caught up with him to reminisce about that special day. Five years ago today, myself and the team got our first victories in Formula E, a very special day for for myself, a special day for this team uh, to get off the mark. We come from Beijing with a third place and that was brilliant, uh, but we were not expecting to win the second race. I qualified fourth, got promoted to second through a couple of penalties in front of me. Was challenging for the, for the lead into turn one with Serbia. I then overtook Serbia after a safety car period and pulled away and just kept on pulling away. And he's into the lead of the race. Brilliant move from Sam Bird. My engineer at the time was keeping me up to date with the energy and the gaps to the guys behind and I couldn't believe the gaps that I was hitting. It was getting up to seven seconds, eight seconds, nine seconds and then I pitted a lap later than everybody else. It was, it was like a dream. It, it made the second part of the race so much easier for me. I had all this energy that I could use if I wanted to but uh, the only enemy to that was it was hugely, hugely hot and I was told, look, just lift coast, be, be really steady, don't do anything silly, just bring the car home and that's exactly what we did and uh, I, I couldn't quite believe it because I, I wasn't struggling with, with any of these things and, and I was thinking to myself, have they, have they massively miscalculated what I've got underneath me, what's, why, why, why are we so fast, I was questioning my ability and, and questioning the team's ability because I thought that, that this isn't correct but 
Clearly it was correct and we, we came away with the win. Sam Bird, who exits the final corner and wins in Putrajaya, the second round of the FIA Formula E Championship. It was amazing to, to, to cross the line. It, it always is amazing to cross the line first. Um, but where we'd come from pre-season to, to already winning in the second race, we felt like we didn't have the expertise to, to maybe compete at the front. I'm very thankful that since then we've been we've we've gone on to win many more races, have many more podiums, and, and a lot of success. But um, that was five years ago. Five years. Time certainly goes fast when you're a racing driver, and after Sam Bird's round one success, he's surely a title contender for the upcoming season. This is Street Racers, your guide to the epic all-electric ABV Formula E Championship which for five seasons has brought captivating, high-energy, wheel-to-wheel street battles to cities around the globe. After years of amazing electrifying racing, the pioneering electric racing series has achieved world championship status for the next season in 2020 from the governing body, the FIA. <laughs> it cements its place alongside the very best that motorsport has to offer. It's a huge step, but as the championship continues to develop unbelievably fast, we think that the best is still yet to come. Diria, Saudi Arabia, was host to the epic doubleheader start to the new season. For the second race, the all-important qualifying group order will be determined by the results of race one. The drivers who finished that race in the top six would have to head out in the dreaded first group. Our host, rookie driver Nick De Vries, had a great debut finishing in six, meaning he would be heading out onto the sandy and lower grip track. Nick struggled in comparison to his round one success and set a lap that left him in 23rd place at the back of the grid. Nick took to Instagram to address his qualifying mistakes. So unfortunately a bit of a disappointing qualifying, uh, my bad, my mistake. We were looking pretty good in the group, uh, but I lost the car going into turn 9 and almost shunted. So it looks like I'm going to experience everything in one weekend. <laughs> Highs, lows, front of the grid, back of the grid. So yeah, hope to make up a lot of positions and uh, have a good race. One driver that was able to continue his qualifying success from the day before was BMW i Andretti driver Alexander Sims. After securing pole position in round one, he managed to get himself into super pole again in round two. And a stunning performance saw him secure pole for the second time in the weekend, breaking an ABB Formula E record by becoming the first driver to get three pole positions in a row having also qualified fastest in the final round of season five in New York. Just before the race, we grabbed Alex on the grid to get him to run us through that epic performance. Hi Street Racers, I'm Alexander Sims. We're here on pole position. I'm just gonna run you through the lap, see how we got here. So coming through the last corner on the preparation lap, it's important to, to have a nice clean exit, um, get over into turn one, nice and smooth. It's important the first few corners just to get into the lap, have no, uh, no moments as such, and start building the momentum. Through turn four, nice and uh, grippy and super pole, through four and five, had to, to take a bit more speed there compared to the, the group stage. Then six, seven, eight, nine, it's all about building momentum, building speed and keeping it nice and smooth, uh, getting as close to the walls as you dare. Uh, a small dab on the brake into um, turn 11, 12, 13 complex, that's an awesome set of corners. Uh, fairly slow corner 14, important to, to get a good exit, quite a long straight afterwards. And then coming up to the very difficult turn 16, 17. All seemed uh, pretty good at this point. Got on the throttle, then had a, a fairly mega slide on exit, which um, cost me a bit of time, but surprisingly not as much as I had expected. Uh, then the biggest braking zone into turn 18. Uh, important just to, to get that right and not have any lockups keep the minimum speed up through the chicane, lots of time to, to do one and lost there. And then it's the last corner is about finishing the lap in the same way, attacking but smooth and uh, maximize track use to, to cross the line as quick as possible. There you go. 
pretty cool to, to see it back. It's the first time I've seen it. Um, that power slide did look quite good fun. Did you see my slide out of 17? Yeah, we yes, did. Yes, we did. Um, I, knew, I know it, uh, it felt it in the car, but whilst you're in the moment in qualifying, uh, immediately you're thinking about how much time you've actually lost. So now looking back on it, knowing that I still got pole position, um, yeah, pretty cool. It certainly was more than cool, Alex. Three poles in a row. Before we see how Alex got on, we headed from the front row to the back row of the grid to catch up with our host, Nick DeVries, before he started his second ever ABB Formula E race. So a bit of a disappointing qualifying for us. Obviously yesterday we immediately kicked off uh, at the front of the grid. Uh, we did have a slight advantage of being in uh, group three and four. Today we didn't have that. Uh, however, uh, I messed it up. Uh, we, we were well on the way. I did a good sector one, but then I got overexcited and kind of pushed a bit too hard, lost the car and uh, almost crashed. Uh, that didn't happen, but we obviously lost a lot of time. Uh, so here we are at the back of the grid. Hopefully we can make up some positions and continue to, to learn. Uh, it looked like so I'm going for everything in my first weekend, which is which is good. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are cheering for me, and I'll see you on the other side. I think it's all part of Formula E, um, and this is part of the beauty of it with the qualifying format. I know it's not always loved by the drivers. It does does what it's supposed to do. With Nick today, I think he made a bit of an error, uh, which he fully admits himself, and, and that kind of put pay to his lap. So. He is where he is in penultimate place now, um, but it's a great opportunity for him to uh, to fight his way forward, show us what he can do, and uh, and take it from there. As the drivers strapped in and headed to the starting grid, Nick's engineer and the rest of the team in the garage were also getting ready to go green for round two. One minute. One minute. Copy. For the third race in a row. Alexander Sims is going to start on pole position, but yet to win a race, the British driver. Alongside him on the front row is Sebastian Buemi, the two-time champion, starts last. I cannot see the lights. Copy, confirm. All five lights are on. And we go out, green in Diria. Good start from the pole man, Alexander Sims. And it looks as though Degrassi is going to get up alongside the Nissan into turn one. Not quite. Through goes to Costa, ahead of Evans, and then Sam Bird is in the fight as well, going side by side with Eduardo Mortara. They get in front of Mortara, bit of a lock-up further back. Through the right-hander of turn 21, and this is the timing line here, and Sims is disappearing, he's got a 1.1 second lead already. Buemi second, Degrassi third, De Costa fourth, Evans is fifth, Bird is sixth, so no positional changes. There is Nick de Vries on the attack, up the inside of Martin Hua, and that was fairly straightforwardly done. That's number two. Yeah, copy that, good job. Or 20. Nick de Vries up to 18th. Yeah, good yeah. progress in the Mercedes EQ. That's really good progress, actually. He's a little bit behind James Collado. There goes to the Costa up the inside of Degrassi. Degrassi locks up, goes in deep, might lose out to Evans here as well. No, he just about rescued it. Effectively, there goes Bird on Evans. So Evans was trying to get past Degrassi and Sam Bird has just smoked one up the inside of Mitch Evans to take fifth place. Oh they... no! De Costa's hit Buemi and spun him round! What the f*** happened to Santa Cruz? They said it at the briefing! Penalty now! Penalty for these guys! He stopped in the middle of the corner. I'm really sorry for him, but I, there was nothing I could do. Nothing. De Costa is going to be in attack mode. So May, fancy a look, he does. Degrassi squeezes him, Costa forces his way through. Bird's there to take advantage, is he? Yeah, no, and Evans Bird's is going to take lose. advantage of that. No, not quite. Bird holding on, oh, contact. Hit. Bird brushes the wall, keeps going. Has oh, another just. hit at the wall. I think he might still be in the race. Evans just broken my car. <laughs> Yellow flag deployed and the car is broken, Sam Bird. The championship leader is out of the race. Watch out for uh, Bird at turn four. Safety car in the slap, safety car in the slap. So we are about to go racing again. When's he going to floor it? There he goes. Does he go through the attack mode activation? Yes, zone? he does. He does. And 
Da Costa overtakes him, then gets on the brakes. That's the people are overtaking behind the safety car. There's debris going onto the circuit. That's from Maxi Gunter. Uh, Gunter passed me. Gunter passed me. Copy, I saw it. Uh, and Da Costa gets a drive-through penalty for causing a collision. Antonio Felix Da Costa from second place in the race, a drive-through penalty for causing a collision. Frights. Robin Frights is in the wall. Broken front left. That could be another safety car. I crashed. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Racing back underway. Alexander Sims weaving around. I think Degrassi's got a better restart, though. If I'm Degrassi, I'm going to attack mode this lap right now. Can he just keep in front? And he goes for it. Will he stay in front of Maxi Gunter? No, he doesn't. Loses out this to Stoffel Van Dorn as well. Here it comes Degrassi, though. Covers the inside to Stoffel Van Dorn. He'll try and hang on, but Degrassi has the extra power. Oh, he did the run into the back of Gunter. That shows you the difference of, in speed that attack mode makes. De Vries is under investigation now for a battery infraction. And that would be a shame for him because he's had a great drive up into eighth place. The orders further back may be up for debate. One thing that is not up for debate is Alexander Sims, the 31-year-old from London in his 14th Formula E race, wins in Diria. Alexander Sims victorious for BMW. What a race, what a drive. Okay, Alex, quality page. Magnificent drive. You know from like you race winner, mate. <laughs> well done everybody. Very proud of you all. Fantastic job. A flawless performance by Alexander Sims saw him lead from lights to flag to secure his first ADB Formula E win. A fantastic result for BMW I Andretti as his teammate Max Gunter joined him on the podium in second place with 2017 champion Lucas Degrassi in third. Our host Nick DeVries had a fantastic race and drove from 23rd on the grid all the way into the points, crossing the line in eighth. So yes, from P last on the grid to, um, to P8, honestly, super happy with that. Didn't expect it, but uh, you know, as Formula E and motor racing proves, uh, it's not done until the checkered flag uh, drops. Um, we had it all, like uh, virtual safe for Foucault's yellows, uh, safety cars, crashes, a lot of overtaking, energy management. So very, uh, very happy that we brought home some points after such an eventful race. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. I'm off and see you, see you guys next time. A great drive from Nick, but unfortunately he received a time penalty for the battery infringement, which dropped him down the order and out of the points. It was one of a host of penalties handed out across the field, including several for overtaking under a safety car. Nick took to Instagram to post about dropping out of the top 10, but despite not managing points in round two, he remained positive about the start of his rookie season. Max Gunter was also given a post-race penalty, taking away his podium result and dropping him out of the points, promoting Stoffel Van Dorn to third place. Two top three finishes for the new Mercedes EQ team in their first two races. An impressive start. All of that post-race reshuffling means that after the opening rounds in Diria, Alex Sims sits on top of the leaderboard with Van Dorn in second and race one winner Sam Bird in third place. What an incredible start to the 2019-2020 championship. The track in Saudi Arabia certainly gave the drivers the stage to put on some incredible performances. But the show didn't end there, as the party continued on into the night. A spectacular end to the first race weekend. That's all for this episode, but we'll be back soon with more electrifying action. See you next time, street racers.